Iwata passed away on November 21st in 2016, and the next day on November 22nd, Peter Neuendorfer passed away as well. And I will just say brief things because now we will be having a program with John Bamer and Steve Rapson who will be telling and performing uh, from his life. But for those of you not familiar, that Peter Neuendorfer was born in the Boston area and lived there for the duration of his life and spent his later years in, at the Hale House in Boston and was a member at the First Church in Boston as well. He also, in addition to being a, a very talented singer-songwriter and pianist, he also had uh, the great mind of a computer programmer and he developed one of the first route finding software applications for Boston Area Transit and was a finalist in the annual Loebner Prize Contest in Artificial Intelligence. And he was very active in the open mic community in the Boston and beyond area in Massachusetts with multiple CDs that he created with his friends. Um, he shared his music in open mics and um, in churches and other parts of Boston, and we will get to experience some of Peter today with his good friends. He passed away on November 22nd with friends and family close by after a year-long struggle with cancer and multiple pneumonias. His passages and his songs will be performed today by his good friends, Steve Rapson and John Bamer. Please welcome them up here. <laughs> Thank you, Cheryl. <clears throat> John and I are going to do a wrestling tag team of uh, Peter's creations. <clears throat> How many people knew Peter Neuendorfer? Oh, good. So you don't need me to tell you that um, he was a genius, and it took me until his parting for me to think about who he was and what he meant to me, for me to, to um, recall uh, what he meant in the artistic community. Uh, I think it's the old, uh, you don't know what you've got till it's gone, applies here. <clears throat> I'm going to read a poem written by Peter entitled Great Aunt Sally. He accompanied himself uh, while playing, a, um, playing his piano. And since I produced all his CDs, I had access to the tracks. And so I removed Peter's narration, which you may hear slightly in the background, in order to put mine. Uh, I loved his writing musically and uh, lyrically. And this is his poem, Great Aunt Sally. Great Aunt Sally greeted us late at night in the fall where she owns a summer cottage. Hello, Ed, she barked. Hello, Peter, Jane, and all. She left the porch to light on, full bright wattage. Driving to Ashburnham at the edge of the state, sleep will wait. Aunt Sally winters in Philadelphia, spending summer and fall in this New England town. Her long life is a grand cycle. Leaves turn from green to red to orange to brown. Driving to Ashburnham at the edge of the state, sleep will wait. Her world is busy from symphony to woods and fields, reading the Sunday Times on a screened in porch, admiring sunsets, listening to Marla as well. After her wood stove meals, off to town in a vintage Nash that she drives so fast like a bat out of hell. My family stayed at a smaller cabin at the end of a wagon wheeled path. Between the cottages was a blueberry patch where we picked blueberries 
to bake a muffin batch. Driving to Ashburnham at the edge of the state, sleep will wait. Our cottage heat was a pot-bellied stove. I brought in wood from an outside pile. The view out back was a wooded grove, out front a field with mountains far off by a mile. Dad and I cleared a path in the wood that wandered about in the wood. It was overgrown with stumps and branches. Volunteer work turned bad into good. Spider descended from the ceiling. Good luck. Birds chirped, mosquitoes bit, butterflies flew. As my mother worked on the Sunday crossword, stuck trying to solve a difficult clue. Next, John Boehmer. <laughs> Sorry, I, I know I was in charge of that, <laughs> and I failed. This is a short poem I wrote um, a year ago. I guess a year ago. It's called So Long. We arrive late. You are holding your pants up by the belt as you shuffle to the curb. I help you into the back seat. You are hungry. You tell us matter-of-factly that there are still tubes coming out of you, but the bags are gone now. Is it painful? No, just annoying. Down Commonwealth Avenue, we drive past bare trees lit up bright for Christmas. Light of the world. While you chat from the back seat, I count the bumps between Back Bay and Kenmore. My offer to drop both of you off at the entrance is dismissed, so I round the block to find a space just a few steps from the entrance. You are weak. At dinner, we swap gifts and autograph them. The restaurant is loud. It is hard to hear each other. We eat quickly, and I call for the check. I help you into the front seat for the ride home. You are tired. More bumps on the drive home. I hear you wince once or twice as I concentrate on the road surface. You say you're just being overly dramatic. You are being gallant. I help you out of the car and up the steps to the door. We say good night, and I watch you disappear. I am already saying goodbye. Thank you, Joan. I met Peter 27 years ago at an AA meeting. My sponsor told me that I should, because um, I didn't want to go to an AA meeting, and she told me how to behave, so I just did what I was told. And she said, find somebody who seems to have what you want and go stand next to them. And funnily enough, it was Peter Neuendorfer, whose hands were shaking with um, Parkinson's and uh, who smoked chain-smoked uh, cigarettes from the front of the room. 
um, that I found most like the kind of person I wanted to be uh, with. Because when he spoke, he spoke with so much articulateness and so much humor at um, his problems that <clears throat> it was like my kind of guy. And uh, I attribute uh, being with Peter for those years uh, a great help to me in uh, my sobriety. Uh, <clears throat> he had an interesting mind. And this uh, poem uh, is a, a look into that mind. It's called The Annual Meeting by Peter Neuendorfer. Tommy Petri returned to his favorite place of dreams, this time for a year and a half. He was in a world of robots, bots, boxes, foxes, fears, skyscrapers, giant cranes, and a herd of buffalo while he was asleep on his cot. Gentle harbor waves enveloped his dream. Meanwhile, out on the patio, the household appliances held their final walk-off-the-job meeting. In attendance this Christmas Eve were the following. The uh, can opener, Robbie the robot cat, the bread box on leave from the first state of memory, the uh, computer next door, the air conditioning system, the grandmother and grandfather clocks, <laughs> yesterday's moving picture newspaper, and Tommy Petrie's alter ego on cassette tape, also the Abraham Lincoln cr crossword puzzle machine, and lastly, Richard Nixon's ghost image. <laughs> Battery acid was served with spaghetti lead and copper wire for all. On the agenda was what to do with Master Petri, a human, when he was asleep for winter hibernation. A motion was made to terminally cremate him, and it was seconded by Tommy's alter ego on, on cassette tape. <laughs> The robot cat called for a vote. However, she was soon stopped short by a filibuster from the computer next door, who was sick and tired of managing the Petri yacht when Tom was dreaming and felt that Tommy should be forced to pay in kind. Yesterday's newspaper raised another issue involving the large amount of electricity that Tommy wasted playing computer games. A vote was taken under the supervision of the grandmother and grandfather clocks, and it was decided to terminate Tommy Petri permanently. Meanwhile, Tommy was dreaming of the day not so far off when there would be a rule once again by humans instead of machines. He read about this in a fairy tale book written in another language long ago in a grim past. Tommy woke up in the nick of time and turned off all the appliances before they killed him once again. <laughs> A great mind, don't you think? <laughs> Next again, John Boehmer. Oh, uh, Jesus. <sighs> Thank you. Thank you for doing all the heavy lifting, Steve. <laughs> this is a song written by Peter Neuendorfer, uh, my favorite for many reasons. Um, I, I'm going to try to emulate some of his harmonic sensibilities. Not very easy. Um, Peter was a, a great composer. Um, so here we go. Bye. 
my muscular rabbit so warm Who stopped rather halted for a coffee perk up to speed Down in the night to the motel we all need sooner or later Soon sweat and grist are washed off and he's shorning his scruffy beard How you doing, Saul? Oh, same old, same old How you doing, Saul? Oh, you know, same old, same old Soon he's back by a piggyback beauty Railroad number one style Nickel plate road One that surely moves the nation And he moves round the park cars Round the yard First, first to the wife To the dock, to the bar For a few drinks and where we've been lately Sully talks of dispatch sending him to a strange city a strange city but he'd rather be in this town time to settle down in this town Sully, happy birthday, Sully, she yells. Sully retired last year, I heard. Congratulations from United Lease and Shipping Corporation. How you doing, Saul? Oh, you know, same old, same old. How you doing, Saul? Oh, you know, same old, same old. <coughs> From the willow tree forest, rare to the sight, steps the soul war towards us, making the town by night, making the town by night. John. Well, that's our little presentation of uh, our friend Peter Neuendorfer. We're going to end with a little video that summarizes um, our time with him, but also you can hear from Peter as he performs his um, song, The Candy Store. If I could have three little wishes, I wish for someone to do my dishes, so I could have lots of kisses while swimming along among the fishes. As these moments pass us by, and we think of how life could have been, we're happy that things are as they are, no matter what the place we're in. For my second wish there'd be a sailboat sailing on the sea, where I could have a cup of tea With no more bills for you or me As these moments pass us by And we think of how life could have been We're happy that things are as they are No matter what the place we're in Lastly, I would wish for time To write more songs that we could rhyme With no more ills and no more crime It costs a nickel or cost a dime as these moments pass us by And we think of how life could have been We're happy the things are as they are No matter what the place we're in
could have three wishes more I wish I owned a candy store With chocolate bunnies on every floor And chocolate handles on every door As these moments pass us by And we think of how life could have been We're happy that things are as they are No matter what the place we're in As these moments pass us by And we think of how life could have been We're happy that things are as they are No matter what the place we're in Thank you all for your attention, and I know Peter would be thrilled that you paid attention to his creations. Thanks. Thank you, John. Um, I'm I'm a, I'm Terence Haggerty. I was a friend of Peter's. I am a friend of Peter's. Um, for a long time, he was someone I always looked up to as a songwriter and as a musician, and. Uh, I never was able to cover any of his songs. They were always, I never, somehow they didn't, didn't I couldn't make them sound right. Um, and what I tried to do for this show was find a song that somehow resonated uh, with how I feel about, about him. And I, oddly enough, I came up with a very, very old song, a song I wrote in 1969, which I still think is very immature in a lot of ways. <laughs> And, and it has that Donovan influence, you know, that, but he also loved that kind of music as well. And um, I decided it was the right thing to do. Um, there's a reference to a waterside. I was born and spent some of my youth in Derry in Northern Ireland. And uh, I wasn't born in Derry, but I, was, but I spent some time there. And. Um, some of this song, at the time I wrote it, it, it I was, you know, I, I realized it was like a, a typical post-adolescent lament for my lost youth kind of thing. Anyway, it's called um, Nowhere to be Found. Turn to you. A night of dark nights grew so late. Another day broke through. Painting all your window panes, stretching your river wide, undressing all the old stones. Colors spread out with the dawn, your sky in an old town, with wharves and hills and houses, you know where to be found. The night before I'd dreamed of you and some fine king and queen I knew they must have sheltered you inside those walls I'd seen protected you and bowed to you so you'd know no alarm and all their service Across the river I sat down and swayed from side to side. I wondered why you disappeared. I couldn't think you'd die. I planted you beside this sea for years I held my tongue for years and years the earth turned mad your 
her song had not been sung. Last spring, sweet weed sprang from your grave and beckoned to the sun. I saw your light then shining for the love of everyone. I swear to leave no stone unturned. shown the whole wide world that you were never dead. Thank you. Star Turn. Nothing is quite as secretive as the way the stars take off their bandages and stare out at the night, that dark rehearsal hall, and whisper their little songs, the alpha and beta ones, the ones from the great fire. Nothing is quite as gun-shy the invalid broken pieces, drifting and rootless, rising and falling forever, deeper into darkness. Nightly, they give their dumb show. Nightly, they flash us their message and melody. Frost sealed, our lidless companions. This so much spirit here. Thank you. Thank you so much.